Why hello, it's all with another video, and today we're going to go over Lost Honor, the cinematic that was released during BlizzCon 2018. That is pretty much a conversation between uh, Anduin and Sarafang, and uh, the repercussions from that. Today's video is obviously going to be full of spoilers, and I'm going to make references to 8.1 and some of the contents coming from there, which has not been released, so that is definitely a spoiler. At any rate, let's get started. So pretty. That's the last of the soldiers. We'll be calling up farmers next. He looks old, doesn't he? I think he has a little bit more, he has a little bit of peach fuzz. And I, I went back and looked at the previous cinematics and I didn't quite see it. Uh, but he clearly looks older. He looks way more stressed than normal. The lines under his eyes, his brows a little bit furrowed. Uh, his eyes look a little bit glossier than normal. He still has, you know, that good old chiseled look, but he looks slightly thinner. He looks just a little bit less boyish. A little bit more mannish, and definitely you can see the weight of kingship is on him. But it's cool, he's got it like a cool little puppy behind him, so, you know, it's alright, just scratch his ear a little bit. When this war began. He talks about when this war began, uh, but looking at the shot here, we see multiple bodies all over the dock, and multiple soldiers just kind of staring at him, it, and, and no families are there crying, but, well, I guess that's the limitation of the cinematic. But when does this take place? Uh, there are there are two periods. We can either assume that this uh, scene takes place either before or after the battle for Dazara lore. Uh, because that battle, I, I'm going to presume, is one where the Alliance does take heavy losses. They attack what is ba what is literally the Zandalar capital. So I would imagine that there would be a lot of losses there. Of course, this could be before the battle as well. While we have played through plenty of fighting throughout the Battle for Azov expansion over on Cool Tears and Zandalar, there's a lot more fighting that's going on all over the place, including places that are mentioned in the mission table, whenever you do those, and if you've been reading that stuff. I thought we were fighting for peace. But we're just... fighting. You can see the... You can see the melancholy, the sadness in his face. He he definitely feels uh, the weight of of lives being lost under his command. But he's also growing up, entering this world of adulthood where you got to understand that this fighting isn't going to stop just because you have ideals. People aren't simply going to listen to you. You're doing all you can to stop her, your majesty. And, and and that face, oh, that face really, really captures the frustration that he's feeling. Sure, the puppy behind him is trying to reassure him as best as he can. That's his that's that's Greymane's job as an advisor. But you can clearly see in Anduin's face that this isn't good enough. What I, the King of Stormwind, am doing is not good enough. Or that what I'm doing is just not being effective. And that makes life very, very frustrating. I think it's a really good way to kick this one off. Is he always going to wear that armor? I guess it's a whole, again, a limitation of the cinematic. He can just go in normal clothes. But I guess it's a good idea to go down there. I mean, you are alone. You are going to uh, meet with the big bad boss of the orcs. You probably want to at least have your armor. But he's alone. And ideally, you don't want to be alone when you're going to, uh, you know, basically step into the octagon with an orc. I'm going to talk about why he happens to be alone and go into well, a prediction on what could be a very interesting plot that Anduin is trying to cook. It kind of sucks that Sarfang hasn't changed, right? He never took a, it never took his stuff off, never bathed, never changed. Of course, who's going to try to change him against his will, right? But I guess that's just an orc thing. They're just used to it, I imagine. At Lord Aron, you had the chance to take my life. Maybe even end the war. So, sorry about that. Uh, so, 
Sarfang has had a lot of chances. He's had a lot of opportunities to kill Anduin, to even kill Sylvanas, put, in, put, a, put an end to the War of Thorns right after the whole burning of the tree started. But he kind of stuck around. He effectively didn't do anything. He let a lot of things happen. And I think that a lot of that guilt is compounding on him right now. Balls. Why didn't you kill me? Could kill you now. But that seems idle at this point. Like I said, there are plenty of opportunities that Sarafang has had to take him out, to take Sylvanas out, to make some real impact in this war, and he just hasn't. I spared you because I believed you have honor. And there we go. <laughs> it feels like this is a bit of wordplay, or it's a bit of manipulation on Anduin's part. And maybe Anduin doesn't realize it himself, but he knows how to push Sarafang's buttons. He knows that Sarafang considers himself to be a very uh, an orc that abides by a, a very strict code of honor. As I've been understanding it, though, that idea of honor has been... Keeping him down. It's been weighing him down. Was I wrong? Do you want more innocents to suffer? The Horde... I have given everything for the Horde! When does an orc really try to validate themselves? This is what I'm seeing here. You know, obviously, Sarfang is being frustrated too, being incarcerated for so long, and he might have heard a little bit of what's been going on with the war. He's clearly pissed, but the way I see it, it's this is more like a moment of weakness for him to lash out like this in front of the King of Stormwind. Blood for it, kill for it, and Sylvanas is destroying it. So he's saying that he's bled for it and killed for it. He's he's all for the horde, but Sylvanas is 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 messing all of it up. Here's the thing, though. At the moment, Saurfang, you're not bleeding for it. You're not killing for it. And obviously, Sylvanas is allowed to do what she wants because you decided to leave your post and not return. He will destroy everything. What I want is my horde back. It's hard to not understand what Sarfang is saying and think to himself, man, he is kind of a whiner, is he not? It seems like he's whining at this point because there were, like like I've been saying, there were plenty of opportunities for Sarfang to take some sort of action, but uh, but for whatever reason decided not to. Before the Battle of Lore Run, he was willing to walk out himself and try to take out Anduin himself. He had a death wish. He said goodbye to his son. He just walked out there with his axe, ready to go. What happened to that guy? What happened to that guy who was ready to just throw his life away for some semblance of honor when he could have done other things to satisfy it as well? Such as fighting for the Horde leadership or taking the opportunity to kill Anduin. Sarafang, tell me why you spared my life. I think Anduin knows the answer. He just wants to hear it because I think at this point, for Sarafang to admit it, that would be like the ultimate low point for him. I hoped you would stop her. And there it is. <laughs> this is how I'm seeing this as Sarfang's admission that he doesn't have power when at least the way I see it I don't believe that's true he's the faction leader of the orcs he has clout he has strength he has influence and yet he decides to throw all of that away or at least he decided to not acknowledge his own power and for him to admit to Anduin Rin that he hoped that he would stop Sylvanas what does that say about Sarfang and how he feels about himself at this point? 
what's important here isn't that Sarfang could have stopped Sylvanas, but that Sarfang could have tried to stop Sylvanas by challenging her to a Makara, or otherwise just defying her leadership in her face. If challenging Sylvanas ultimately resulted in Sarfang's death, wouldn't that, in a sense, satisfy Sarfang's honor? No, because he would be fighting for something that he believes in, the Horde, and that the Horde is going down this wrong path and Sarfang is doing what he can to right that wrong. At the moment, he has not, up till now, he has not done it, and that's where I take a big issue with him personally. I can't. Not alone. Oof. So, so this video is called Lost Honor, but you could also call it Anduin's Gambit. This is Anduin's Gamble. He came down here with a purpose. He came down here alone. He had the jailer's keys, no guards, no nothing. So why? I feel that this is a kind of a plot, kind of sort of, by Anduin in order to unleash Sarafang out into the world in the hopes that Sarafang would be able to stop Sylvanas. I don't see this as Sarafang being a traitor to the Horde necessarily. I see it as obviously Define Sylvanas, who happens to be the Warchief of the Horde, so yes, I can see a very strong connection that some fans and critics would have to be like, no, Sarfang is a total traitor to the Horde, F that guy, take him out. But the way I decided to interpret this is that with Anduin's parting words to say that he can't stop her himself, not alone, that he is acknowledging that they share a common major enemy in Sylvanas. I think the reason why Anduin is down here by himself is because he doesn't want this sort of meeting to be public. I'm sure that the only other per the only other people that possibly know about this is probably Gen Greymane and Matthias Shaw, because we've seen in the 8.1 uh, quest that Horde players are able to do, they're trying to track down Sarfang, and we see little bits of evidence here and there that there are some shenanigans, there are some shenanigans going on, that somehow Sarfang is being let out of certain places and otherwise being guided away from Stormwind. Anduin's enacting this plan with so few people involved because he doesn't want the public to know that an orc and a human are effectively working together. The reason why Anduin doesn't want anyone to know is that if Sarfang does somehow become successful and find a way to stage his own uh, his own revolution against Sylvanas and win, the members of the Horde probably don't want to find out that there was some sort of alliance collusion going on. However, I think that there might be just a little bit more at play here. Anduin's trying to flip Sarfang, otherwise throwing support behind him in case he wants to, well, snipe or assassinate Sylvanas himself. But I wonder to myself if the likes of Gen Greymane or Matthias Shaw have more pragmatic plans for Sarfang and are effectively using these good intentions to otherwise crush the Horde entirely. So here's what I'm thinking. Shaw and Greymane, they're totally cool with Anduin's plan to try and flip Sarfang. Cool. Sarfang escapes with the help of Shaw. However, Shaw leaves a sufficient enough trail, so that way the Horde Champion and Dark Ranger Liana are able to find this evidence and to see that, hey, you know what, it does look like there's some sort of Sarfang and Alliance collusion going on. Even if Sarfang only thinks that that cage was left open. Because at the end of that fate of Sarfang scenario, Sarfang's on the run, he's considered a fugitive, according to the Horde, as well as a traitor. So there is a chance that Anduin's being used as well. The fact of the matter is, by the end of this cinematic, Sarfang is just not in a very good spot. He is in a... he's... the, the optics are just bad for him. At this point, he's an orc that doesn't feel like he has any use, and he's trying to find it. He's missed a lot of opportunities to make a difference, but his one redeeming quality is that he's being, he's trying his best to be very careful about his movements and what actions he ultimately takes. This is why at the moment, he's doing more running than trying to stage his own revolution. So I think there's a lot in store for Sarafang, and I think there might be a thread to pull uh, regarding Anduin and who's trying to pull his strings.
So that's it for my analysis. I hope that this was fruitful and that this format was, uh, well, relatively entertaining. But I know that I probably missed a couple of details, so feel free to point them out in a comment below. I would love to discuss them because, hey, that might totally change my perception of how I take in this cinematic. As always, please support the channel the best way you know how so I can keep giving you more of this and all things Warcraft. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Thank you.